Okay, so 2019. Yes. You start feeling not yourself. Correct. What did that look like for you? Well, um, we were in New York City at the time. And actually a couple weeks before we were in New York, I started to have this weird chest pain. Super sporadic, like not consistent, but just like out of nowhere, I'd be like, ooh, something doesn't feel right. Um, and I would tell my mom about it. And I actually started exercising a lot more. So I didn't know if I pulled something and, or if the chiropractor did something. Like I just brushed it off as nothing because I was 17 and had chest pain, you know? Um, but we went to New York. Um, I don't, I think it was actually the first day I was in New York. I felt awful. Like I all of a sudden um, couldn't lay down in bed. Like I felt pressure on my lungs. Um, and I felt just a lot of pain and I was really tired and really out of it. And also I think to put in context, I love New York City so much and I didn't want to leave my hotel room. Like that, that shows how really awful it was. Um, and like, obviously I would go to dinner with my family, but I was half there. Like I was in pain. And um, my, I remember um, being in the hospital, I mean, not in the hospital, being in the hotel room um, with my, my family and and I remember crying to my dad and he was like do you want to go to the hospital like it's okay if you want to go to the hospital and I was like I don't want to go to the hospital in New York City like I would rather like see if this thing dies down and fly home and maybe if I have to but I was I was like I don't go to the doctor like I'm healthy I'm fine um but I was in a lot of pain and I I remember one night like having a moment with the Lord of like, why? Like I, this is, this is a trip I've looked up, like I've really looked forward to this trip for a long time. And it just felt like, like I was, I mean, it, it felt irrelevant to me. Like I was like, like I'm, I'm this is, a, this is just kind of like a stinker, you know? Um, but, but eventually it got worse and it got worse and um, throughout that night, like the Lord really showed me a lot of just visions of me in the mountains and me and him. And that's, that's a space where I feel most connected to him. And so I actually felt peace about it. And he was like, it's okay. I've got you. Like just reminding me of who he is and who he is in my life. And so I didn't have to fear and I didn't like, I, I really brushed off the chest pain. It was like, it's going to be fine. I'm just going to go home and it'll be great. Um, but we ended up going home to Nashville and I was completely out and I would lay on my couch and just watch TV and snuggle with my dog and like, I wasn't present and it was actually, we landed the morning of a Tuesday and mom was going to church and I was like, I have to go. Like I was like, I know my spirit needs his presence um, right now because I feel kind of defeated in a sense and she was like are you sure because I was not looking like I should go somewhere but I did and I got up and I I went to church and I um I got up in the front row and just was praising him because I was like I don't know what this is and honestly it doesn't matter what this is because this is the point of who I am and I mean I was 17 but at least I got that straight you know like that was the whole point of me living and um, this being said, halfway through worship, the chest pain really got to a point where I couldn't, like, I couldn't think straight. Um, and I remember, I remember kind of having this panic and like, not knowing what to do. I didn't tell anyone. I just like snuck to the bathroom. I was like sobbing and I was like, I don't know what's happening. I'm just scared. I was like, I felt obviously panicked in the sense where you don't really can't think like all you know is the pain and um i remember my mom finding me in the bathroom and looking at me and like should we go to the hospital and then in two seconds i said yes 
And they asked me that a lot in the week prior, but I was quick to say no. And so when I, and also I have a really high pain tolerance. Like I've always had a high pain tolerance. Like nothing really hurts me that bad. Um, and so when I say I need to go to the hospital, it's like, okay, real deal. Let's, let's t take care of you. Um, and my dad got in, um, my dad actually flew in from a flight Tuesday night and landed and went straight to church because he knew I was feeling bad. And he landed right when I told my mom, like, I have to go to the hospital. And he walks through the doors and he sees me and he's like, okay, let's go. And we, we, um, we prayed just a little bit, not long because I was like, we, we gotta go guys. Um, and we eventually drove to um, Vanderbilt ER and I was 17 at the time and we didn't really think about going to the children's ER at first, but God was very intentional of bringing a friend that actually had ends at the children's hospital to get us over there quicker. So we had better care taken towards me. Um, and we did. So I remember, I remember a lot of confusion and a lot of, it was funny cause it wasn't fear but it was like, I didn't, I didn't understand, um, but I didn't feel settled, if that makes sense. Like I wasn't giving into fear, but I, I still wasn't comfortable, obviously. Um, but I was, I was beginning to realize I couldn't breathe. Like my, um, my right lung, like I felt like I literally, had this giant sword being stuck in my lung every time I would take a breath. And my breaths were very short and they weren't at all filling my lungs, I could tell. Um, and so I, I, I began to get a little nervous and um, we, we really were praying and going after whatever was happening. We didn't know, we didn't think much of it. Like maybe it was just, I don't know, clot or something that was just holding me back or causing me pain but um we ended up treating the pain with just some morphine and I <laughs> I remember um it, it lasted honestly I was in the ER for like a couple hours like and it was at night so I was there till like 3 a.m waiting to be moved to a room or something because I was like am I either gonna get let go or what's the deal um and there was talk of pneumonia. And so like severe pneumonia. And I was like, sweet, I can do that. Like pneumonia is nothing. <laughs> I've got that. And, um, and I remember like, just kind of feeling like, okay, like I, I've got this. And then an hour later, um, I got CT scans done. Um, and then the doctor came in and it was me, my mom, my dad, and my dad's good friend. And I was in bed, kind of in and out because it was 4 a.m. And um, she kneels down to the bed next to me. And in the nicest way that you can say, we see a mass, um, she said it. She was like, hey, we see a mass. Um, we are going to admit you to the oncology floor. We think it's lymphoma um, and we are really sorry to tell you this. Kind of just simple. And I felt a lot of shock. I, I remember looking at my parents first, obviously, because they're my parents are the person I go to for everything. So I look at them to see if they're okay. And dad loses it, <laughs> which is very much like my dad um, and my mom my mom started to cry too. And my mom doesn't cry very often. So I was like, okay, what's really happening? And I remember my mom looking at me and going, do you know what oncology means? And I knew what it meant. And I said, yeah, I didn't have a lot of words, but it's really um, looking back on that moment and seeing kind of the panic unfold in front of me, like I could see it, but in here, I, there was no panic. Like it was, I mean, it's supernatural because once you hear that you have cancer, you don't 
go, oh, I feel fine, but I felt so much peace. And obviously Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that's where I knew he was with me. And I felt no fear. I just felt peace. And I actually, I remember going to my dad and I said, I don't have cancer. <laughs> I was like, I don't have cancer. I actually don't believe I have cancer. Um, Cause I didn't, but the, I was, I was admitted that night and was at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital for 21 days. Um, I, I, it was hard. I was 17 and felt um, not alone in the sense that I didn't have community, but I did feel like I was walking it alone, obviously, because I was sick. Um, and I was in, I was the one that was getting the procedures, getting the, the pain and having the moments of fear. Like, like obviously throughout those 21 days, I, I didn't just have perfect peace. There was moments where I felt terrified. Um, and it's really funny because, um, I, I actually, um, remember the second day that I was admitted, um, there were, the doctors were starting to talk about chemo and like, let's get her on this fast. And, um, I remember, I remember being like, you don't have to do that. Like, I, I would always have this little inner dialogue in my head about it. And, um, and eventually they all came like, the whole oncology team at Vanderbilt came into my room um, and they, they told me that, well, we saw an air pocket in your mass and we actually don't see that in lymphoma. So we're taking cancer off the table. And I just, I was, I mean, I was sleep deprived, so I was barely there, but I just remember going, Mm -hmm. And my dad breaks down, my mom breaks down, but I, that's just another thing that I was like, God, you told me, so I believed you and here we are, you're showing me your goodness. And um, I think that entire, honestly, that entire time at the hospital was a constant. I know that right now in the natural, my body is screaming in pain, but you're telling me one thing and I'm gonna believe that. And so that's what the outcome was. And I. I really, that's how I live my life now is because I saw in the moments where I faced death, in the moments where I was like terrified and crippled with fear, he was in front of me, he was breathing with me, he was telling me to breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out. And you don't realize the value of things until you don't have them. And for me, that was breathing. I couldn't breathe and I, I didn't realize how much one I needed it to be alive but when it came to the to the moments where I was like father like I don't understand yet I trust you and he would just tell me to breathe in and out and I would always in the moments where pain was so intense I would close my eyes and I would focus on his eyes because I knew that was the one thing that could get me through whatever, whatever thing I was walking through in that moment. And I really, I grew, I felt like I became a different person when I exited those hospital doors because it was, I mean, it was transforming for sure. Cause you find bravery where you least expected it. And I, um, I just, I found a foundation that I didn't know I could have. I don't, I don't, I don't think I would be the woman I am now without that 21 days, because as awful as it is to think back on it, it, it actually gave me the foundation of trust in Jesus in the way that I do now. And that's something I never want to take for granted at all. And I just, there's so much, honestly fruit that came out of it because I wouldn't have had the relationships I have now. I wouldn't have um, had the 
the relationship with the Lord that I have now without that. And um, yeah, I mean, that's just a snippet of honestly what those 20 days were.